This section will cover more complex algorithms and arrays. This can refer to algorithms that might require some mathematical knowledge in order to implement and properly understand, or simply algorithms that combine two or more sub-algorithms in order to get their job done. Some more creative thinking will also be required, and the implementation skills required will also be a little higher. In this video, we are going to talk about rolling hashes for constructing a palindrome. A palindrome is a string that reads the same forwards as it does backwards. A hash function, in our case, will simply turn a string input into an integer output. It's a bit more complex than that in general, but that's all we need to know for understanding this video. A rolling hash function, again simplifying it a bit, is simply a special kind of hash function that allows us to efficiently compute hash functions incrementally for a string. For example, if we want to compute the hash function for radars, and we have the hash value for radar, then we won't need to iterate over every character in radars. We will simply be able to use the value for radar and do some simple computations with that and the character s. We want to add a minimum number of characters at the end of a string such that we end up with a palindrome. That is, if we are given the string loaded, we want to end up with the string loaded AOL, which is a palindrome. So we have added a minimum of three characters. We can't do it with any less. And we can see here that in order to do that, we have to find the longest palindromic suffix, that is the longest palindrome that the string ends with. To simplify our implementation a bit, we will actually reverse the string, the input string, and find the longest palindromic prefix. But these two are interchangeable, so suffix and prefix will mean basically the same thing in our case. Okay, so we will define the following rolling hash function. f forward of the string will simply be the indexes of the characters in the English alphabet multiplied by a small prime number with raised to increasingly higher powers. K here is the length of the string, and we will simply sum all of these up, and take the result modulo capital P, which is a larger prime number, usually in the hundreds of thousands. So f forward of de, for example, will be d times p to the power of 0 plus e times p to the power of 1. And again, d and e refer to their indexes, their zero-based indexes in the English alphabet. We can write f forward of a string plus a character as f forward of that string plus c times p to the power of k. So you can see that if we plug this in here, then it's correct. If we have another character here, then here we will have another plus that character to the power, that character multiplied by lowercase p to the power of k and everything taken mod capital P. So this recursive definition holds. Now we need another rolling hash function, we will call it f backward, that computes the hash of the reverse string. So f backward of a string should be equal to f forward of that string reversed. And if these two are equals, then we likely to have a palindromic prefix here. Why do I say likely and not definitely? Because you can see here that our hash functions are computed modulo capital P. So this will lead to some information loss and so-called collisions or false positives. That is, these two might be equal, but the strings might actually be different. We will see though that if we pick lowercase and capital P well enough, then this is very unlikely to happen. But still, it's something you should keep in mind. We have f backward of the string equal to something very similar to this, except that the exponents here are in reverse order. For example, f backwards of de is d times p to the power of 1 plus e times p to the power of 0. You can see that it's basically the same as computing f forwards of de in reverse. 
and we have achieved our goal of being able to implement to, of being able to compute these efficiently you can see a recursive definition for f backward here when we add a new character we multiplied f backward of the string by lowercase p and simply add c again if we plug that in here you can see that it holds and f forward equals f backward implies a palindromic prefix and we have to find the the longest one Let's now go into our code editor and write this up. So first of all, I set up a naive implementation here, which I encourage you to go over and try to understand, maybe work it on paper for a few iterations. Make sure you understand how the slicing works. In the rolling hashes functions, function, I set up lowercase p and capital P to be 23 and this large prime number which is useful to remember when dealing with problems involving hash functions in general. Next we need to set up the reverse string that is strrev equals the reverse of the input string. Then we initialize our hash function values to zero that is f forward equals zero and f backward equals zero. We will also initialize p power equals to 1. This will be the current value of raised to a certain power so as to not have to exponentiate p at every step since the exponent always increases by 1. We will simply compute it as we go along. Next we need a variable that stores the longest palindromic prefix or suffix. We will call it max suffix palindrome and it will start at 0. Next we iterate over the reverse string also keeping track of the index, which in case the two hash functions are equal, will also give us the length of the current palindromic prefix. We compute the index of the current character in the English alphabet using Python's ORD function, which gives us the ASCII value of the input character, from which we subtract the ASCII value of lowercase a. We will assume that the input is made up of lowercase English alphabet characters only. Next we compute f forward and f backward according to the recursive definitions given before. So f forward is equal to f forward plus the current character's index multiplied by p power and everything taken modulo capital P. f backward is equal to f backward multiplied by lowercase p plus the current index. Everything taken modulo capital P as well. Next we update p power by multiplying it by lowercase p. And I have a question I want you to think about here. Does it make sense to also take p power modulo capital P? So does it make sense to do Try to answer this and also consider other programming languages maybe, different than Python. It helps to take the result modulo p because this will lead to smaller values. Smaller values will result in faster computations when multiplying and adding or dividing or generally doing any arithmetic operation with numbers. If we have really large numbers, Python can handle them, but at a cost. If we have like 100 digit numbers, it will take much longer for Python to multiply them than if we have say 10 digit numbers or generally 32 bit or 64 bit numbers. So even in Python, although it can handle huge numbers, it helps to take the result modulo p at each step to keep the numbers small. In other languages, this is even more important because they will give wrong answers because we will have overflow. So if we have an integer data type in a C language, for example, like C, C++, C Sharp, or Java, then we will get overflow if we work with large numbers or even errors in some cases where the result of an operation exceeds 32 bits or 64 bits. So it definitely helps and it's a good idea to take the result modulo P at each step if possible. Be careful though when uh, doing this when you have division because you cannot do it with division directly. 
It only works with multiplication, addition, and subtraction. For division, it's a little more involved, and we're not going to get into that right now. Next, we check if the two hash functions are equal. If yes, then we have a palindromic prefix, which we will store in max suffix palindrome. So we will only store the index here. And at the end, we return the string, concatenated with the reverse string, but only starting from max suffix palindrome plus one. That is, we ignore the palindromic part that we have found because we don't need to also concatenate that. Okay, other than this, I set up some tests here in a format that you should be familiar with by now, and let's run them and see what happens. Great, so they pass, and we can see we get the correct result for the example as well. And like I said, it's possible that this will give false positives, and therefore this assertion here might fail but it's very unlikely to happen with the way this test set up right now. And I encourage you to think of ways of changing these tests in order to make them harder, so to speak. So in order to increase the chances of rolling hashes giving wrong answers.